Hello everyone, welcome back to my home studio. Um, this is my day 21 of my coronavirus distraction videos that I've been making uh, for my students that I'm missing, my high school students um, who I haven't seen in uh, several weeks, and also for other people who just perhaps want a distraction of things that are going on in the world and you would like to think about something more related to clay and something fun and enjoyable. So this video is a follow-up to a couple of the videos that I've done already on throwing wheel thrown eggs, trimming eggs, and then I've had a couple of them where I've done a couple different decorations on them. Today's video, I am doing my version of a Fabergé enameled egg. It's not as fancy as theirs, but this is it. So it is slip trailed. It has little legs. It has a little handle in the shape of a crown because of the coronavirus is a crown, right? And then when you open it up, it does it's not hinged, but it does have a flange on the underneath side of the lid and uh, that will keep it so it doesn't slide off. So I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to speed through it quite a bit because this was a bit time consuming and uh, hopefully you enjoy it and subscribe. If you would like to see more videos on working with clay, drop me any comments below if you have any questions or maybe suggestions for other uh, sorts of videos that you'd like for me to shoot while we're off. Um, I do have a running list of things. So anyone that has suggested things, I do have those underway. So. I hope you enjoy, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can. Okay, so today's egg, I'm going to attempt my version of a slip trailed um, Fabergé egg. I'm going to start by making a horizontal line that looks relatively straight. So I'm just setting it inside of a little cup and hopefully this will appear straight. And you can barely see it, but there's my line. That looks that looks straight enough. I'm okay with that. And then I I will mention had I um, had access to my other templates, I could have used like one of these and like slipped it over, but I didn't actually have my uh, templates they were all at school but I could say use this because I did want to make another line down here on the bottom I'll use this as a guide but because I I didn't have my larger templates I just tried to find a pot that was appropriate in size and then I'll do one more up here I just want to make sure that looks centered I made the lines light enough with um, a needle tool that if I needed to say add a little moisture and rib them out I could but I, th I think I'm okay with those they they look relatively good to me I think I'm all right with that okay so now that I have some of those guidelines I'm going to go ahead and start to lay out the design that I'm planning on doing I should mention I'm still working on foam rubber. I just have it covered with a towel for ease of cleanup. And here I'm just rolling a straight edge to make a nice straight line for um, the bands going across. Okay, so what I've done is I've made uh, three horizontal lines right here, the middle line is going to be the cut that I'm gonna to make to separate them. And uh, I'm going to use those uh, lines as a guide to mark out some spacing. I'm going to space this again, kind of using um, probably six segmented. I'm going directly opposite of the first one. And I'm just going by eye, just trying to make sure that everything looks evenly distributed. Okay, so I have the divisions of six done, okay, and I have it marked all the way down. But now I'm going to add one more. So I'm breaking the sixes in half, so I'm gonna have divisions of 12. 
and now just breaking that up evenly again so I have 12 segments and that will give me diamonds a little closer. All right, so now I have it marked out with divisions of 12. And now I'm just going to think about how I'm going to connect the dots. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect um, from the top down to the 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 top of the three lines. I'm going to go over two. So I'm going to move over two. So I go from the top down to the bottom of that one. So the next one, I'm going to go to the top and then over to the next one. So by first of all making the hash marks, it allows me to be a little bit more accurate with my spacing. Whenever I need to do some sort of a an even pattern like that, I will often lay it out first and then evenly divide it. Okay, so now I have the lines, they're going over two to the right. Now I'm gonna go back. This one goes to this one. And again, I'm moving over two. And notice I'm just pressing the edge of my needle tool. If my ruler had a thinner, skinnier edge, I, I could have used a ruler for this. This is just a Mud Tools um, large platter rib that I had laying around. It's got a nice little thin edge. And now I'm going to do the other side. So again, I move over two. I hope this might make it a little bit more clear. So like this top portion that I have drawn here. So I have two lines with equal divisions. What I did was I started uh, at one and I drew the line going over two. Same thing, next one. So now I'm going over two for each one. And of course that's going off and that's going off, okay? And then when I go back and I go to do the, um, the other angle, again, I'm gonna go over two. So that's how you get the even, equal, spaced diamonds, okay? And when you have an instance like the egg, okay, where it's not going to be the same amount, okay, because it's skinnier at the top and the bottom, right? It would be expanding. And then to do this one, let's see, I would do, I would go over two, so it would be right there. And you can, as long as you have it evenly divided and spaced, you can, right, and those don't have dots, you'll get something equal. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense if you couldn't really see it on the egg. Okay, so I have my divisions laid out now. And I am planning on cutting these apart. So I want to go ahead and do that now before I start to do any of the slip trailing. And I want to try to keep the smoothest cut as possible. So I was trying to follow my line as best as I could. Okay, and there's my cut. Just gonna take a little water and smooth out the edges of the cut. To try to get the edge super flat, I'm just gonna grind it a little bit there on the table. way if I had any uh, discrepancy with the uh, cutting with my knife it'll flatten it out some and there's just a wee bit of an edge 
right there that I'm just making sure that I'm cleaning that out so it doesn't like fold over on the inside there. Um, that looks um, a little bit better, a little bit more precise. Okay, now because I don't want the lid to slide off, I am going to put a little flange on the interior of the top part. All right, so I'm overlapping this. All right, so that's going to fit down in there. It's a little bit big right now. I'm going to score and slip the ends of this flange together. I'm going to set these under a damp towel so they don't get too dry at the moment. going to prep this by scoring the part where it's going to attach on the interior of the lid. Okay, now this is just a dry fit. I'm not physically attaching it yet. I'm just making sure it fits in there and then that will fit on there. Okay, once I have the dry fit, then I just need to make sure that it is the exact same moisture before I attempt to add it on. So I'm just going to take a little heat to it. You could use a hair dryer. This is a heat gun. Now here I'm scoring on the interior of the lid where this is going to be going. slip. This is just my throwing water that I had at my wheel. Um, I would use water normally, but since I had the throwing water, I thought I would just use that. And now I'm slipping both surfaces. And then a little bit more scoring. Now the reason that I didn't put the, the coil on immediately when I made it, the reason I dried it, is because you want to have things exactly the same moisture when you attach. If you have them very different moistures, like leather hard and plastic, um, when the plastic one begins to shrink, it's going to start pulling away and it will leave cracks. So if you've ever had, say, a handle that cracks on a mug, it could be because you put them on at different moistures. Also, you always wanna make sure things dry slowly because if things dried uh, quickly, it could end up by also causing a crack because parts are shrinking faster than others. Okay, so the idea is it needs to stick up what you would say proud beyond the edge, okay? But it does need to like angle in like if it flared out it wouldn't fit anymore and now I'm just going to gently blend the top portion of this on the inside of the lid I, so I slip score and blend smoothing that out with my finger a little bit of course I could use a paintbrush to smooth it as well and I'll use a paintbrush here to clean up that attachment on the outside. And again, just making sure it's still angling inward some. There we go. I'll let that dry for a little bit before I actually put it back on the base part. I'm going to play around with some ideas for legs because um, a lot of the Fabergé eggs actually had legs on them. So I thought to kind of mimic that, I would try to do some legs similar. I've decided to make only three legs. Uh, number one, because um, I was going with the six-segmented six uh, concept. Um, 
of course, 4 is also division uh, divisible by 12, but, well, okay. So I am making three legs as opposed to four, and there are uh, a couple reasons. First of all, I have a, a segmented item with 12 segments, right? 12 is divisible by three. Of course, it is also divisible by four, so I could do that as well. But the reason that I'm really doing three is because whenever you have three legs as a tripod, it will sit level. If you have four and one leg is not even with the others, you have difficulty with it. So I'm going for more of a simple, uh, simple solution to that. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer. I'm going to flatten out the back side. So to flatten them, oops, I usually just kind of flatten it out. This is a really small piece of clay. It's not working as well. Okay, so that flattened it. Okay, there we go. That one did better. It didn't bounce. Same with that. I don't know why the first one bounced so much. All right, so that is going to be my flat back. And then I'm going to taper it. And I'm actually going to make something that's kind of resembling, oh, maybe almost like a claw foot. Okay, so I'm looking at something like this. They're a little bit clunkier, a little bit thicker than I would normally prefer. However, because it is clay, I can't have them too delicate and too thin or else it could pose a, you know, a, a breakage risk. The next step is going to be doing some slip trailed lines. Now, there are different things that people can use for slip trailing applicators. One of the easy things would be, this is just an old hair color bottle. Okay, you now know my secret, I color my hair. Um, the tip is a little too wide for what I want to use on this, so I'm not actually gonna use this, but it, it does work great as a slip trailer or an applicator for glaze. Um, you may have seen other videos where I've used this uh, um, a red bulb slip trailer and uh, I've uh, used this for glazing some uh, plates and boxes that I show for my students. These are what I keep at school because I have enough for all of my students to use. These are great. They only have one size tip on it, um, but they're really good and effective. But today I'm going to use, this is a Zyam uh, slip trailer and it comes in a little um, container like this. Um, it has different sizes of tips that you screw on to the, the little holder there. So I'm using one that's a little bit smaller than the Red Bulb uh, slip trailer. And then this has um, a little uh, nozzle that you can actually get the slip in there a little bit more cleanly without getting it all over. So it's a little bit nicer than the Red Bulb uh, one. So this is some slip that I made up some time ago. I'm just gonna stir it back up again because it's been sitting. I will, uh, I'll make a new video uh, because I know someone asked me about how do you make slip, show us a video of how you make slip. I will um, make a new video with that, but I do have an old video that you could check out. I'll link it in the video description and uh, I'll link it on some of the, the little cards that you see um, in the video as they pop up. This slip that I used for slip trailing doesn't have anything added to it. It's just watered down clay that I have blended up in it and got it really smooth. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna fill the bulb syringe. One of the tricks that I do is I always try to 
get as much air out of the slip trailer as possible when I fill it because you um, will have a much easier time with it if your slip trailer is full as opposed to it being you know half full with air and then you might inadvertently push air out okay so now with my the tip in and connected I can try this out and you can see it comes out a nice little even line if I make a mistake with this, I can always, um, you know, wipe it off. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this in a manner that I can show you. And I'm just going to trace over the lines. Now, I have to admit, that is pretty messy. I'm gonna try it again. I need to find a different hand position for my hand, so my, uh, hands are more stable and I can rest. So I'll readjust this for you. And now I'm just slip trailing the lines, trying to be really careful not to bump the lines that I've just done and not to drag it on the towel either. All right, so there's my first lines. I need to let those get a little bit drier. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the lines on the top. All right, so my first lines are on there and I need to allow those to dry some. Um, meanwhile, I'll work on, I wanted to do a very small little knob for the top of it. I know it's an egg and it doesn't necessarily have to have a knob, but I wanted something. I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, it looks like this is drying pretty well. So now I can go ahead and take the opposite line, get that down. Now the one thing that I am doing, as I do the opposite lines, I'm being careful not to drag through and mess up my previous lines. And all the previous lines, of course, are leather hard as I apply this. And then I'm letting those lines get a little drier. And now I'm just tweaking a little bit on the legs, kind of sculpting them, make them look a, a little bit more refined, a little bit thinner, with a little bit more uh, of the gesture of the form that I wanted, making sure they match. And now that's a little cleanup with a little bit of, of a brush. And now I'm doing the horizontal lines at, so that's the bottom one. And then this is the top. Again, doing the little horizontal lines. And then attachment of the little knob, which is a crown, as you can see, with its little jewels there. And then attachment of the legs, making sure it looks level, adding a little bit more of the slip right along the edge. So when I put that together, it's gonna be a nice, smooth, even edge just tweaking and cleaning it up with my fingers with a little bit of a brush, trying to make sure it looks super smooth and even. And there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos on working in clay.